Welcome everyone back to our channel. Wish you have a very nice day. We hope you enjoy this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay updated with the latest information. Join us on this journey and listen to this video until the very end. Amazing things are happening in Israel, some people think they are signals leading up to the rapture. Strange occurrences are sparking discussions all throughout the world. Wondering? And we are, too. Without further ado, let's discuss the bizarre end-time events that are filling people with shock and fear in this video. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam have all benefited greatly from the land of Israel's historical, cultural, and religious contributions. It has witnessed the rise and fall of civilizations as well as the impact of numerous cultures, including Canaanites, Assyrians, Babylonians, and ancient Israelites. With the histories of numerous cultures and customs preserved therein, it resembles the cradle of civilizations. The Israelite tribes came together under King Saul in approximately 1000 BC, and then under King David and King Solomon during the United Monarchy era. On the Temple Mount, King Solomon erected the first temple, a unique house of worship that represents God's promise to the Jewish people. In 722 BC, the Assyrians took control of the northern monarchy of Israel following the breakup of the monarchy. The initial temple was destroyed and the Babylonians invaded the southern kingdom of Judah in 586 BC. The second temple period began when Cyrus the Great permitted Jewish exiles to return and construct their temple following the Persian victory over the Babylonians. Jesus of Nazareth brought Christianity to the area in the first century CE. Regretfully, during the Jewish-Roman War in 70 CE, the Romans demolished the second temple. These historical occurrences shaped the globe at large by profoundly influencing the cultural, religious, and historical identity of the Jewish people, in addition to religious scriptures and archaeological evidence. Many Jews left Europe in the 1920s and 1930s to seek safety in Palestine from anti-Semitic sentiment. As a result of the Jewish immigration, or Aliyah, which created agricultural settlements like Kibbutzim and Moshevim, the demographic landscape was altered. But tensions increased because Arab populations feared losing their identity and land, and because their interests in the region clashed, there were violent fights between the Arab and Jewish groups. Jewish people were dispersed far from their homes as a result of World War II, which led to the creation of Israel and its declaration of independence. They were cut off from Israel, a location they held great significance for them. But as God had promised, an incredible thing occurred. The Jewish agency's founder, David Ben-Gurion, proclaimed the State of Israel to be established on May 14, 1948. He emphasized the close ties that exist between the Jewish people and the territory of Palestine, acknowledged the difficulties that Jews have suffered, especially during the Holocaust, and expressed appreciation for assistance from other countries. Let's journey back in time to the prehistoric era, some 4,000 years ago. See the earliest remnants of Jerusalem, referred to in ancient writings as Ralem, in the arid regions of the Middle East. Jerusalem has seen the markings of several powers throughout history, including the Canaanites, Jebusites, and Israelites. King David was instrumental in the conquest of Jerusalem from the Jebusites and the establishment of the United Kingdom of Israel's capital city around 1000 BCE. The city developed under King Solomon's reign, displaying its political and spiritual significance through the construction of magnificent buildings like the First Temple. Jerusalem is central to Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. The Western Wall is an important piece of the Old Temple, and for Jews, it is the holiest city where one can feel the presence of God. Jerusalem is associated with the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus in Christianity, 
and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is an important destination for pilgrims. It is the third holiest city in Islam, with the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque among its hallowed landmarks. Jerusalem has been governed by numerous empires and civilizations throughout history, including the Israelites, Romans, Arabs, Crusaders, and Ottomans, all of whom left their mark. As a prize for conquerors, the city developed into a center for cross-cultural interaction. A potent prophecy found in Ezekiel 36 verse 24 states, I will take you out of the nations, gather you from all countries, and bring you back into your land. This means that God has vowed to restore the Jewish people to their ancestral homeland after they have been scattered throughout the world. In chapter 30, Jeremiah also described God consoling his people. God vowed to rescue them from slavery and restore them to the land that was entrusted to their forefathers. The main goal of these predictions was to gather the exiled Jewish people and return them to the country that God had promised them. Jerusalem, with its sacred places, is still divided today along religious and political lines. A mosaic of several faiths can be found in the old city. Complicating matters is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, in which both parties regard it as their capital. International diplomacy and peace negotiations continue to be polarized over the city's status. What is the current state of Israel? It is evident from looking at Israel nowadays that the ancient prophecies are coming to pass. The Jewish people currently reside in the land that was promised to them. This demonstrates to us that God's long-awaited prophecies come to pass when the Jewish people return to their ancestral country. However, the tale is not over yet. Israel now experiences harsh weather. Not much grows organically on the terrain, and it's hot and dry. But hey, what do you know? There's an incredible thing going on. From ground that appeared incapable of supporting any kind of food, the Israelites are producing an abundance of crops. Israel's trees yield more than trees in other regions, such as Russia. How do they accomplish that? They take their cue from Zechariah 8 verse 12, a promise found in the Bible. They have faith that God will enable their harvests to flourish even in adverse circumstances since it states, the seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. Although it may come as a surprise, we can see God's promises being fulfilled in front of us. It's amazing to watch these ancient prophecies come true. One of these prophecies, made by a man by the name of Zechariah, has to do with the current political climate in the Middle East. Something significant is predicted in Zechariah's prophecy in chapter 12. On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. Anyone who tries to move it will hurt themselves. These words from the very old prediction speak of Jerusalem as a powerful force that stays put even in the face of adversity. They also speak of Judah being besieged along with Jerusalem. The Significance of the Third Temple Many people, especially Orthodox Jews, place a high value on the Third Temple in Jerusalem. Compared to the ancient temples that are now gone, it is thought to be more unique. It hasn't been built yet, but there's a lot of buzz about it. For Orthodox Jews, it is more than just a structure, it is a place of prayer and a deeply symbolic representation of holiness. The temple movement has been laying the groundwork for the construction of the Third Temple since 1987. Orthodox Jews take this seriously, despite the fact that religious concerns are receiving less attention in general. In order to make sure that everything is done correctly and in accordance with religious law when reconstructing the temple, they have re-established a religious commission known as the Sanhedrin. Their intention is to build it precisely as prescribed by sacred texts. Rebuilding the temple, according to Orthodox Jews, will make the world a better place. 
They think that after the temple is rebuilt, things will only grow better. It is interesting to note that the third temple's construction and Israel's return to the promised land are in line with biblical prophecies made by prophets like Isaiah and Ezekiel, who spoke of God's promise to lead his people back to the promised land. The Bible contains a passage from Ezekiel that reads, Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy when my sanctuary is among them forever. This passage implies that when God's unique location, the sanctuary, is among the Jewish people, everyone would understand why Israel is unique. A different passage from Isaiah states, I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. This indicates that God desired for his sons and daughters to return to the unique land he had promised them, resulting in a sizable gathering from all directions. The third temple is not only a building, it is considered as a place for God's particular presence, even though it is believed that Yeshua serves in the genuine tabernacle in heaven. The prophet Ezekiel saw God's particular presence depart the ancient temple but also saw that it would return and live in a new forever home in Jerusalem, as stated in a Bible quote, let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them. A long time ago, the learned Jewish man Fong Amum said that the third temple is a symbol that God will always be among his people, not just a repeat of history. Thus, the construction of the third temple is about proving that God is constantly with his people, not just about the past. Along with this reconstruction, an enigmatic discovery was made. Recently, an interesting find was made under the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. For Muslims, this mosque holds great significance since they think Abraham, a prominent person in Islamic history, built it. Unexpectedly, a special location was discovered beneath the mosque where Jews had carried out rituals to spiritually cleanse themselves. This discovery is significant because it shows how important this location is to many different religions. This find was made by an expert in the study of ancient artifacts, Robert Hamilton, following damage to the mosque caused by an earthquake. Underneath the mosque's floor, he discovered a mikvah, a Jewish ritual bath. During the Second Temple era, Jews valued this mikvah because it provided a space for spiritual cleansing before to going up to the Temple Mount's designated area. This discovery is especially intriguing because it contradicts accepted wisdom. Some believe that this site was never home to an old Jewish temple. But this discovery is altering historical perceptions. Scholars delving into historical documents have discovered proof corroborating the historical presence of a temple atop Temple Mount. It demonstrates the tremendous significance of religion and culture in this important location, going beyond simple archaeological discoveries. And suddenly the red heifers showed themselves. Five red heifers from a Texas ranch were recently brought to Israel which many believe to be the fulfillment of a prophesy regarding the third temple's construction in Jerusalem. Famous for being completely crimson, these young heifers are especially important in Jewish law for cleansing rites, especially for priests who might come into contact with the deceased. Less than a year old, the special heifers should continue to be perfectly crimson. If so, they can be used to make ashes, which are an essential part of Jewish purifying rituals. In accordance with Israeli veterinary authority laws, they will relocate to two places in Israel, one of which will be open to the public, following a seven-day quarantine in Hia. They will be raised until they turn three years old, when they can, in accordance with Jewish law, be sacrificed in order to generate ashes. These heifers were brought to Israel in large part thanks to the efforts of the Jewish Christian charity Bon Israel. These cattle were grown by Byron Stinson, a rancher from Texas and advisor to the group. Officials from Temple Institute and other dignitaries graced a welcome ceremony upon their arrival at Ben Gurion Airport. 
The importance of the red heifer is significant in the Bible. According to Numbers 19, its ashes were historically used to purify the Israelites. A red heifer's presence today is seen by many as a portent of Christ's long-awaited return and the impending construction of the Third Temple. Since the time of Moses, nine red heifers have been offered as sacrifices, none have been offered since the Second Temple was destroyed. It was even taught by Rabbi Maonis that the Messiah would offer the tenth red heifer as a sacrifice. Many believe that the September 15, 2022, arrival of these five perfect red heifers from Texas in Israel marks a major step toward the construction of a new temple and the fulfillment of prophecy. A red heifer must meet severe requirements set forth by the Mosaic Law, including never wearing a yoke and being perfect. Numbers 19 2. There are special customs associated with slaughtering a red heifer that mirror Christ's sacrifice. Like the red heifer sacrificed outside the camp, Jesus, who was said to be without blemish, was crucified outside of Jerusalem. Jesus' sacrifice purges from the penalty and corruption of sin and death, just as the ashes of the red heifer purify from the contamination of death. Moreover, the historic Pool of Siloam was rediscovered. A noteworthy discovery, the Pool of Siloam is 53 feet long, 18 feet wide, and 19 feet deep. Painstakingly crafted from natural rocks, it tragically fell apart during Babylon's assault on Jerusalem and the Second Temple. The good news is that it was enlarged during the reign of Herod the Great and reconstructed during the time of Nehemiah. Extremely during the Feast of Tabernacles, which commemorates the Israelites' liberation from Egypt, this pool was extremely significant as a place where the sick and impoverished went to receive healing. One of the main Jewish holidays is Sukkot, the festival of booths, which honors the liberation and desert survival of the Israelites. Similar to the shelters built by their forefathers, People construct makeshift sukkahs to express gratitude to God and pray for rain. Everywhere throughout the world, Jewish communities celebrate Sukkot. A priest would happily sing psalms while gathering water from the pool of Siloam in a golden pitcher for Sukkot. Next, in a custom connected to Isaiah 12 verse 3, he sprinkled the water on the west side of the altar. Pouring water on Sukkot represents drawing joyfully from the wells of salvation, as Isaiah 12 verse 3 says, With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. The festival of booths was a joyous occasion, with the pool of Siloam serving as a pivotal element. Even though the original pool was destroyed, its reconstruction made it possible for people to carry on with their customs and celebrate. On October 12th, there was a water libation ceremony following the reconstruction of the Pool of Siloam. There was a unique ritual known as the water libation, which was modeled after an old temple custom. They traveled the ancient routes from Jerusalem's old city to Shiloh, also called Siloam Springs, under the direction of special priests, or Kohanim, and Levites carrying musical instruments. Chanting, dancing, silver trumpets, and a golden jug full of Shiloh pool water were all part of the procession. They followed the ancient temple customs by erecting a replica altar and tools on the top of the mountain. The Hakel ceremony, which takes place once every seven years, and the uncommon priestly blessing completed the rite. Although the water ceremony isn't mentioned in the Torah specifically, it's widely accepted as part of Moses' oral teachings and is observed as a joyous occasion. In the ancient temple, this 15-hour ceremony was followed by festivities all night long until the temple service the next morning. Sukkot became an international day of worship as people flocked from all over the world to celebrate. A wine-pouring ceremony and water ceremonial were held during the morning service on the final six days of Sukkot. After traveling from the temple to the Shiloh spring at the foot of Mount Moriah, priests filled a flask with spring water. During the ceremony, 
two priests filled designated holes on the stone altar located in the courtyard of the temple with water and wine. The Shiloh Pool, also called Shalom in English and Silwan in Arabic, has biblical significance and is capable of being revived. At this pool, during biblical feasts, visitors would begin their trek to Jerusalem after the construction of the Third Temple, washing themselves before offering sacrifices in the inner court of the Temple Mount. Its historical significance is revealed by ongoing exploration, which uncovered it in 2004. The Babylonian Talmud states that the year following the Shemitah is a particular year that is lucky for the coming of the Messiah. The prophecy found in the book of Amos says that the tribe of Israel will return from abroad. The Talmud highlights the hazy necessity for a second physical temple while talking about difficulties prior to the arrival of the Messiah. Rather, living a life devoted to God and getting ready for any end-time problems is building a spiritual temple. The Chinese president has fulfilled a recent end-time prophecy. Recent remarks made by Chinese President Xi Jinping have garnered international attention because of their strong language, which includes biblical allusions and metaphors. Interestingly, she used imagery similar to Revelation 16 verses 12 to 13, which describes the catastrophic rise of impure spirits like frogs and the drying up of the Euphrates River. This linguistic change corresponds with China's evolving military posture and foreign policies. China has always placed more importance on diplomatic and economic growth, but in recent times, it has adopted a more forceful global posture. Examples include threatening Australia, warning about Taiwan, and even threatening to shoot down the plane carrying a US envoy who is now in Taiwan. Her orders to get ready for rough seas emphasize how serious the impending difficulties are perceived to be, which has led to conjecture regarding China's objectives. These remarks align with guidelines intended to fortify China's national security apparatus and competencies. She highlights the necessity of better data and artificial intelligence security management, increased national security education, and an efficient risk monitoring and early warning system. She frequently highlights China's military prowess, which includes having the biggest army in the world, in her commands. This has given rise to theories and interpretations regarding China's military's probable involvement in hostilities in the future. There are questions regarding this because of the allusion to Revelation 16. This section in the Bible describes a decisive war, some people compare the armies in Revelation to China's current military. Examining the prophetic insights found in the book of Revelation, especially in Revelation 9 verses 13 to 16, provides information concerning an enormous army with 200 million soldiers rising from the east. The writings of the Apostle John offer fascinating descriptions of a historical battleground with an unparalleled armada. Although it's best to use caution in interpreting these remarks too literally, they do suggest that China's leadership is becoming more urgent in the face of difficult issues. The mix of strong language, biblical allusions, and orders for military readiness and national security highlights how China's foreign policy is changing. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. What are your thoughts on today's topic? Please leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the bell button to receive notifications when there's a new video.